six o'clock, so I think we can go ahead and call the meeting to order. I am pulling up our agenda. Um, we are calling our meeting to order. As far as roll call calls, I think that um, Angela already shared with us that we have two excused. And then is anybody else that we're missing? Are we all ready to roll? There's no, uh, we are missing Francis. Oh, no, Francis. She's, she's here. here. She's so, here. Yes. I think then that's everyone. Yep. We're good. Okay. So I think then we'll go right into our public invited to be heard according to our agenda. I'm following it as closely as I possibly can. Um, and so we'll let Angela, if she wouldn't mind introducing our public invited to be heard. Sure, let's, oh, I made two things. Um, actually, I added Elaine and, um, and Grace as a line item in six. So I don't think, in fact, we have any public to be heard here. No, no one reached out to me either asking um, to be included. Okay, perfect. So we're good. Great. Great. Um, all right, then we need to take a look at our minutes that were sent out um a couple days ago and see if we have any additions or corrections to our minutes from our september 17th meeting i'm looking additions subtractions punctuation spelling everything's good all right, then we need a motion to approve our minutes from September 17th. I motion to approve them. And do we have a second? Okay, so Andrea motions to approve. Susan mo moves to second. All in favor, uh, raise your hand or say, well, you don't need to say aye, but raise your hand if you are on camera and you are a voting member. Okay, great. All not in favor. Raise your hand. Okay, excellent. Good job. We will move on um, and see um, if we have any additional um, ad ad additions to tonight's agenda. Nope. Okay. Um, I guess I must, Angela, be using the old agenda. Did you send out two? Nope, no, no. Nope. I've got it. Nope. Great. Then you want for review in the final. So I've it's got them both. Got them. Yep. Okay. okay. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry. We talked yesterday and I'm, I, I had forgotten that we were going to make that one item a line item. So um, we'll go ahead and move to number six, which would be, if nobody has any additions, um, we'll move, go on to number six and talk about our public art project updates, um, starting with art on the move. The updated agenda, I added line item uh, piece number six, which is a presentation by Elaine Waterman and Grace Gutierrez, who are joining us from the firehouse. Because I could put you guys first so you can get in and get out. All right, so take it away, Elaine and Grace. Okay, awesome. Um, so I'm sitting a little bit back so you guys can see the artwork, but thank you so much for having us at join the meeting tonight. Um, I'm very excited to be sharing with you and uh, speaking with you all regarding this very important work of art. Uh, both of these two artists, uh, you may have you may know that uh, the firehouse just opened their Dia de los Muertos uh, exhibit. Um, on Thursday, and I uh, wanted to know if anyone has seen the exhibit yet. Yay! And, and Andrea, your Katrina is beautiful. Um, but uh, Dia de los Muertos uh, 2020, past and present, was curated by Grace Gutierrez, who is a Longmont native and Latina artist, and Grace is visiting. Um, she's also on the call today. And uh, through the exhibit, she brought together four regional Latinx artists to respond to historical events in Boulder County uh, within the Latinx community. So I'm actually going to share my screen and um, going to share the information about the two artists uh, that 
we are going to be focusing on for um, hopefully adding these two works to AIPP's collection. Uh, it is the artwork by Adrian Rea and Rom Ramon Trujillo, um, dealing with the shootings of Jeffrey Cordova and Juan Luis Garcia. Uh, so Reyes and Trujillo's altar paintings depict a significant moment in Longmont history, a moment that affected the whole community. Through these pieces, two young Latino friends honor two young Latino friends from the past whose lives were cut short. Community response to the altar pieces has been very positive, and guests who have seen the work uh, during the opening have stated that the work is very timely and the subject matter handled with respect and care for the members in the community whose wounds are still fresh after so many years. Rea and Trujillo are re regional artists and their inclusion as people of color into the collection would add a richness of voices represented. I hope you will consider adding the paintings by Adrian Rea and Ramon Trujillo to AIPP's collection. Uh, so if you are not familiar with the incident, this is information on the screen of um, the shooting that occurred. Uh, in 1980. Um, it did end up with the formation of El Comité. Um, and I know that uh, many of you are familiar um, with that community organization. And uh, I am actually at the firehouse right now. Um, so you can see the works behind me. Um, I will move the screen, but these are the two works. There are two uh, flanking round pieces. That one's Adrian's and then these ones are Ramon's. So the video doesn't do it justice. The camera doesn't do it justice. There's a lot of um, depth to the flowers. And um, as you can tell, there are 3D elements on um, the central piece as well. I know Angela has um, other copies of the artwork that she pictures that she's taken. So maybe later on after we're done, we can like show you they're a little bit bigger and that they're a little more like she focused. You could see them a little bit better. So maybe that's something we can do in a little bit. Um, and also I did send a video to Angela regarding um, uh, Grace did an artist talk with both of the artists and uh, she uh, asked questions regarding uh, the importance of the significance of the, hi the history of Longmont um, and also about uh, creating a connection between uh, these two gentlemen that were killed. So if you have any questions, um, I, I can definitely answer or Grace, who is the curator of the show, she can answer as well. I think it would be helpful if I, in fact, showed some detail and shared my screen. Um, I got some some side images, so I'm going to. Um, so I'll stop share. Okay. That I don't. I don't want to kick like everyone out all of a sudden because that is exactly what would happen. Uh, let me just give me a moment. I have a quick question while you're fishing around for that, Angela. Yeah, you got it. So, um, have you guys talked about where these would live long term? Good question. Um, let me bring it up. Okay, that's. Can everyone see that? Give me a thumbs up if you can. I can only see a couple of people right now. Okay. Um, so, the way. Um, uh, the opening was last Friday, and Elaine um, and Grace contacted me uh, midweek this week, and today's Thursday. So <laughs> that's why you haven't received any information about this ahead of time, and we threw it on the agenda pretty quickly. Um, and I invited Grace and, and Elaine just to present uh, this information. So that is to say, uh, I went, visited the work to take some quick measurements, to look at it in space. Uh, likely with all three pieces, it's about eight feet long. Uh, it would need some tall ceilings. It definitely can't be in a place where um, it would be crowded from above. And uh, it certainly has some depth to it, which let me uh, flip to the next 
photos. That is not what we're looking at here yet. Um, shoot. But so the conversation of uh, of space or location has not been addressed. It's really simply the works themselves. Um, it's three works, as I understand correctly, Elaine, but really a package because, um, and Grace, that you can interrupt me at any time, that the artists, while they're regional artists, um, found connection with this story, almost kind of like a brotherhood and a friendship, uh, if you will, that connection. So um, historical relevance plus, um, you know, regional artists working. So I, I said I'd come and put it on the agenda. So um, I think we'd have to get a task force of a couple of people together uh, to look for, or of course, if anyone um, has ideas, again, at least uh, eight feet long total. That's not to say that it couldn't be a broken wall or something like that. Um, Ange Angela, can you click on the pictures? Cause we're just seeing the little thumbnails. Oh, sugar beets, yes. That's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it nice and big. How about, oh, now look what I've done. I, I have them too, <laughs> if you want me to pull them up. Uh, da -da. Give me a second, sorry. So um, Elaine or Grace, I don't know if you can speak a little bit of more about ideas of placement if you have them or if anyone on the commission has ideas of placement. How's that? Can you see that? That's better, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was just so about to pull up. A detail of the of the flower that's made from the newspaper clippings and the highlighted newspaper clippings. Um, can, you, can you repeat the size of these again? I'm sorry. Now that sure. I see them, I'd like to know the size again. Sure. So, uh, Grace, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would say from uh, that shelf is not included in the piece. No, that's one of our shelves. So it would not have like the altar underneath it necessarily. Um, but I know that that circle, that center circle is like a three foot, um, you know, circumference or no circumference is this, this is the circle around, but like, you know, three feet this long. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm an artist, not a, you know, I, I don't, not a mathematician. No. Um, but yeah, so the two ends, the two end pieces are a little bit smaller. Um, but yeah, that center piece, they're, they're all, all three of them are oil paintings. Um, the center piece is collaged with actual um, newspaper articles that ran after the incident happened. So it's like, you know, um, reprinted Daily Times call articles of kind of community response, um, words highlighted, um, kind of, you know, addressing that like universal language of like this tragedy that happened. Um, and then the two paintings on the side are their actual names, like in a nice banner and like flowers as kind of like a funeral, like wreath type style. So that's, you know, that's what the works are. What year did it happen? Uh, 1980. So this year is the 40th anniversary of the incident. Um, so, you know, like with everything going on with 2020 and, you know, all the like racial um, injustices and all of this, like, you know, kind of it all being under a microscope. 2020. Uh, that's all you have to say. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was nine years old when this happened and living in Longmont. And I remember it very well. I remember yeah. it being um, people on bated breath when the trial happened. Um, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a very monumental experience in Longmont. Yeah. And these are definitely indoor, uh, they would be indoor um, installations, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so originally I asked um, Adrian Raya, he's the first person I asked um, to take on this project. And 
he came to me after learning about the pro you know learning about the event and he said that it was really important to him to ask somebody um another artist friend of his to collaborate on the project um he, you know he said these are two friends that died one day apart from each other um he said that it was really important to him to kind of collaborate with someone to like have that like dual um you know have like two minds working on it as it was like two friends that passed away so it's i i like that um he asked a second artist to collaborate with him throw my little hand up i'm sorry i missed the last couple of months but um i just wasn't sure if where where the courthouse project was at is there a possibility that i mean this seems like that would be completely apropos um you know just dealing with justice issues for, for that space it could be um those ceilings are quite low and right now we did install the um hanging mechanism in there and art on the move is there for now uh, that is not to say that there are not other walls in that space. Uh, also, I was thinking the library as well as the Civic Center. Mm -hmm. Naturally, of course, uh, no matter where the work would go, um, th there also may be a place in the museum, in the atrium, but again, we need to remember that it needs to be public space, right, and accessible. Um, I think that there are certainly options, um, and it will just need to be investigated. I also don't think that we have spoken about the price of these these works. So, um, but I did want to say that uh, there is room in the budget uh, for this work. Correct me if I'm wrong, Elaine. We're looking at a uh, thousand dollars for the centerpiece, and then fourteen hundred each for the two sides for a total um, of thirty-four hundred. I think for it's, the entire work is that right? It's twelve hundred for the two sides, Grace. Okay. Is that, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, so thirty four hundred. That's right. I, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not a math person, clearly. <laughs> Me neither. Uh, no, so the so thirty four hundred for the entire work. Yeah, Francis. Sorry. Uh, so I'm I'm looking at Elaine like it's lit so beautifully behind you, and I feel like there's something that's coming. Like the light really lends to the to the message to the reverence of it. I wonder if we can allow something in the budget uh, for you know to make sure wherever we hang it, like it's like we just light the perfection out of it because that's the it's it's just it's beautiful behind you like that i agree that's a great great point francis i also wanted to ask is there some sort of um like a plaque or something that explains a little bit about the the piece um we do have wall text uh that is in spanish and english i will move to it anyway uh you probably aren't going to be able to read what this is, but this is the Longmont Daily Times call newspaper uh, from the event. And then this is the information of El Comité um, about the formation of the organization. Um, and this is basically the information that was on the website that I shared uh, in English and then in Spanish. And we absolutely could make interpretation panels to be next to it, maybe not right next to it, a title plaque and then interpretive panel in the area, wherever it ends up, certainly. Other questions or feedback? I'm personally very excited about it. I, um, I've been working with other, a few of our colleagues on this board about trying to get things, some, <clears throat> some pieces like this. And I was just, it was kind of like, uh, a universal when Angela shared this with me so I'm pretty excited but um, and again it's well within our budget um, we would need to form a task force um, and find folks to help us find a location um, maybe as Francis said um, think about creating side panels and also uh, purchasing lighting so of course that would increase our increase things a little bit but not so much Pamela did you have a question I'm trying to see if anybody can hear me. Yes, we can hear oh, you. Okay, because I don't have a microphone or anything showing like everybody else does. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're great. No worries. Thank you for asking. Okay. We want to make sure you're heard. Okay, thank you. 
I just have one one quick thing um, to add, which is that um, if there's some you know sort of transition time, the museum certainly could also act as a, a holder until it finds a permanent home, just to add that to the conversation. That's what I was thinking too. I thought that that would be a good place to start anyway. So, Angela, Susan, thank you, um, Amy. Um, I would love to be on a task force to find a placement for it. And I wanted to ask the firehouse if they um, had something in mind that they were um, thinking of as far as the placement um, that they had suggestions about or that they were partial to. Um, well, I know that I spoke with Angela and I had suggested the library at first, but I know that space there is kind of limited. Uh, the Civic Center was the secondary place, um, but, you know, anywhere that um, we can hang these safely and together with enough space is, is uh, would be great with us. With the remodel at the Civic Center, um, I think that would be a matter of plotting out some space, correct? Yeah, and certainly speaking to our colleagues with the city and because we need to be assured that there may be a wall, but that there's not something else planned. And because, um, you know, that, that's a very large project and a lot, it's a lot of visitation. That also may be a good thing and making sure that the hallways, easement, all of that business uh, that won't ruin it because there is depth as well, right? Mm -hmm. We just want to be sure that we're taking care of it the way that we need to, but I think a task force to get together and start making connections with our, our city partners, looking for a place and just frankly going on some field trips, mm -hmm. asking some questions uh, would be really helpful. As for the purchase, um, if we're, we would like to consider a motion, we can do that or we can table it to new business and let uh, Grace and, and Elaine on their merry way this evening. Yeah. I'd make a motion to accept to purchase the works um, from the Firehouse Art Center. We have a second. A second it. Um, Can I ask one other question? Yes, me too. Firehouse? Let's have some discussion, yes. Ha have, have the pieces hung anywhere else outside of Firehouse? No, no. the first place, yeah. Okay. So also, I have one other question. Go ahead. I was just going to ask um, for if it was going to live permanently somewhere, do we think it would benefit from a plexi box over the top of it? That was exactly what I was going to ask about. Like a shadow box, you know, something that protected it. Yeah, it's definitely. I think like, especially the, the 3D flowers are actually like attached separately. Um, but those, I think, are kind of tempting to, you know, especially like children, like yep. passing by. I think it's like an element that is like tempting to touch. Um, but it is also something that can be removed. So that's something to think about. Um, but the flowers definitely add a few more inches like forward from the flat panel. Andrea? Um, just a suggestion. I don't know if the artist would be interested in creating like a more, you know how they have the altar pieces in Santa Fe. You know, maybe like it would be an altar piece shadow box, protective altar piece, you know, kind of a surrounding framework. And I don't know, it's, it's kind of the artist's decision really when it comes to that, but just a thought. Maybe that would be something that if we all decide, look, kind of seems like what we're leaning toward buying the art and then this task force could maybe get together and determine you know we have the budget to do that something like that um, and that could be a separate line item that we would vote on to spend the money on like a, a, a shadow box and maybe having the artist commission the artist to help design that is that what you're trying to I think yeah. that would be that'd be really cool yeah, yeah. we have to make a decision on that you know and I think that the flowers, if you've looked at them, that, yeah, I can see if we had it anywhere that's public, um, children are going to be around. <laughs> and not just children, but, like, I'm, like, a little kid, and I might want to go to them, too. So, 
they're really cool. And so that's something I think that we could do that as a separate once we get if we all decide to purchase the art, then we could do the task force can propose to the commission in the next two or three meetings, um, how we want to have it displayed and, and get as much support we can from the artist as well. Okay, so we did have a, okay, go ahead, Susan, I'm so sorry. Okay, it, no, it's just a little thing. Um, Angela, do you have access to the article? Because I wasn't able to read the whole thing that maybe you could send the commission so that we could read. I can it. get it too. Okay, yeah. that'd yes. be great. So Thank I can you. send you the article, the uh, video clip. It's about seven minutes long. Okay, great. Uh, I'll send that. I didn't want to send it in advance because you'd be like, what is this? Uh, right. So article, uh, video, and then uh, the firehouse is ours when this exhibition is going to close. So you can go and, and see it or grace yeah. and go and see it in person. So you can fall more in love with it because you will. And, <laughs> um, but don't touch the yeah. flowers. No flowers or, or the, Oh, the oil is just, I'm just going to lick it. Yeah. Um, is there anything I, else? Um, yeah. So I, Elaine. Um, I just wanted to state that we are appointment only for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday between the hours of 12 and 5, but then 12 to 5 on Saturday, it's open to walk-in traffic based on capacity. I just didn't want anyone to come by and, and not have access. And masks, okay. of course. Yes, yes, masks. Say that one more time. Appointment so, only Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday between 12 and 5, and then Saturday from 12 to 5, we're open to walk-in traffic. Got it. Uh, from 12 okay. to 5, yeah. Perfect. Um, so we should have had a discussion before I asked a motion for a motion. Um, we kind of did things backwards. So since we've had this discussion, we probably should ask again for a motion to purchase the art as Andrea proposes. Andrea, are you okay with doing that again? I make a motion to purchase the art at the old firehouse. Oh, excuse me, that's the old name, the Firehouse Art Center, and uh, that's it. <laughs> okay. And then Susan was our second, or Susan, second. would you like? Yeah. Okay. And then we might want to. Then we can decide. We'll put a task force together to to figure out how we want this piece to be delivered to our community. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No, you were in favor, right? You kind of flew up right at the end. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. The motion passes. Let's let's buy this beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. Thank Yay. you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. One quick note, um, Elaine. I will speak to you kind of offline, but if we can, of course, this is a matter of public record. But if we can prevent from throwing this into social media, etc. So we can contact the artists with a fair amount of time. Um, they're probably going to be a little surprised on this one. So we'll keep it under wraps until, and then um, we'll let you know once the artist knows and we can all celebrate. Okay. And that means all of us too. <laughs> I'm, I have a big finger, lots of fingers and a big mouth. So. <laughs> Guess what I just did. Wait, let me show you these pictures. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you thank so you. much. No, thank you so much for taking the time to come at such short notice. We're very grateful. And thank yeah. you for thinking of us in the city for this work. That's it. It's yeah, that was really thoughtful. Thank you. I know, and I know the artists are going to be really, really excited. So thank you. It's it means a lot to, you know, have their work seen and loved. So thanks. I think it means a lot to the community and I know this was such a heart-wrenching thing for the community and our Latinx community and families there I mean it was the families were it, it was a really really even at nine years old I can remember people crying and and I mean being very very upset during the trial and so thank you this is I'm not saying it's closure but it it's, it starts with awareness and then um yeah it's really exciting thank you so much thank you Okay, great. You all can go home if you would like. Or you can stay and hang out. But if... Yeah, we do have vacancies on our board, so you could practice if you want. <laughs> Grace, 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 think about it.
Okay. <laughs> Elaine, come on. We can show you. That'd be wonderful for you to come join us. Thank you, guys. I'm going to go home and make my kiddo dinner. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to head out too, but thank you. I really appreciate it. and thanks for, you know, nice meeting everybody too. All right. I swear I have an old agenda or something, but I it's the most current one I have, so I don't know what happened to my Yeah. I think you were good. Okay. So okay. then we we want to move on to um art on the move. So, if the forklift arrived when after I left Longmont, um, we're supposed to install Annette Coleman's piece tomorrow because it's finally finished. So that's the stained glass work. Oh, nice. If you're interested in popping by St. Stephen's tomorrow um, about 1130, if we have a forklift, we will be installing. <laughs> and if we don't have a forklift, I'll be there, standing there <laughs> waiting for a forklift. So that's pretty heavy for you to be lifting by yourself without a I don't forklift. think it's possible so we'll we'll see about that but that's the last piece and Cindy I did get your email and we're wrangling the images yeah I don't know it just kind of got lost there but um now that this work will be installed we actually have everything we need so it, I went out today and took pictures of a few things okay so and I was like of course a, a day too early for the whirling dervish of course because that is Murphy's law Oh, 2020, right? So yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, and so once we get that postcard out there, we'll we'll mail it out um, to everyone. In the minutes were the locations. I know that I sent an email and it bounced and I realized later, but hopefully you all have the locations now. So that's good. Um, any questions about Art on the Move? No. Um, I I hate backtracking. Do we need to add an item to our agenda to, to discuss a task force for oh, our I, previous project? Oh, that's a good question. Well, here, let's finish this one. Does anybody have art on the move questions? No. No? Okay. Um, yes, task force would be helpful. I have Susan Horowitz. Does anyone else? I would like to. One or two. Okay. Is that good? Okay. Noah, you want to do that? That would be a really good one for you. Sorry, I shouldn't volunteer you. <laughs> uh, no, I think that's a good idea. I'd, I'd like to be on that as well. I think it would be good. <laughs> Sorry. No so, pressure. I, I do uh, want to apologize. I'm not very talkative today. I'm not feeling well. So just kind of sitting back. You I'll talk enough for you, Noah. Don't worry. Excellent. Okay, that's a good start. And then we'll get together and um, start working on this. So how I, I my last question is, how long is it at the firehouse? Oh, till it's there through the beginning of November. I okay. think she said November 5th. Andrea, does that sound right? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. So, yeah, go visit it for sure. Yes. <laughs> uh, I was hoping to pull up video um, that Andrea took of direct, the direct purchase of Ursa Major, uh -huh. but it's not working. Um, so I'll keep trying to get it to, to work. But needless to say, if you have not seen Ursa Major, she is installed in the breezeway on the eastern side between third and fourth and has been very well received. The Longmont leader wrote a little bit about her today in a scavenger hunt, outdoor art scavenger hunt article. Um, and then I expect something from the Times call soon. Um, yeah, so she's she looks great. And thank yeah. you to everyone who came out to help because that was quite the, quite the move. But I, I told all my physical therapists to go and they all loved it. <laughs> So that was really cool. Randy's got her picture. I've seen a couple of pictures on social media. Thanks, Randy. We all know how big and beautiful she is. That's a huge accomplishment, folks. That was really cool. Even Paul Meese was uh, quoted in the paper about being happy that it finally got done and finally installed. And so that was, that was really great. So. I think they just ripped that off from his Facebook posts because he was so excited. 
he was very excited and and that was really neat that he took you know it's really fun <clears throat> this is my fifth year to see how things have progressed and when we get a decision like that and i'm sure andrea has seen this over the last several years that when we when we reach a goal it's really exciting awesome okay um so uh direct purchase of ursa tony ortega mural project okay i'm gonna try and share again get ready so if you all got a chance to go to the museum and see things, um, I had a COVID scare the day after I was there, and so I had to cut my visit short. Um, but it was really neat to see people working on it, and the colors, and the paint, and the community involvement. It was great. So can you can everyone see? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so the panels came to us with a raw sketch that Tony had done based upon the previous sketch that uh, you had seen. And each individual or, or family group uh, got together and, and first put down a base layer. And after that first day, it kind of looked something like this. And staff was saying, really zombie people? Like, we would like to see where this is going. And Tony kept saying, just, you know, here, have you seen the sketch? Have you seen what it turns out? Like, that's pastel, you know. But progressively over the four days, we had over 70 participants, which I think in the era of COVID is a massive accomplishment. We had kids, we had a large demographic, wide demographics. So, uh, man, I just think that it was gangbusters. So, uh, Slowly but surely, every day, these pieces and parts would fill in. And I think Tony's biggest challenge was that the, the mural wasn't all together, abutted. So sometimes, like, somebody's arm wouldn't get painted the right color. And uh, so he got to learn the process, too, and kind of new process. So then the same panel, if you can see from the previous image to this one, is when the texture, which he calls dry brushing with acrylic, started to happen and it, it does start giving it that, that pastel look, if you will. And uh, so here it is and each, each day someone would go over a little bit more and let those under colors start coming through, but then go over the top. Uh, and so here you can really see the layers of color. I'm a little alarmed that someone would say this was um, zombie people if they hadn't done their research. That's well, the obvious. green the green faces were a little a little nerve wracking off of first day, but but then once you see the skin tones coming through, that the Tony said that that green to undertone really lends itself to allow for all sorts of different kinds of people to be represented, uh, and then eventually we got to the texture point of it. Now. Um, these images, the imagery, the figures, uh, the museum staff collected uh, images, photographic images of the festiv festivities of um, Dia over the last 20 years and presented those to Tony. And that's where a lot of these figures came from. So real people throughout, throughout time. So here's some mask working on panels. And here's the whole thing in very bad light in the museum, pre varnish, a uh, little bit closer, if you will. And so tomorrow, while I wait for a forklift in another area of town, uh, Jared and Brack will be um, installing this work in the breezeway between 4th and 5th on the west side. So while you're coming over to look at Annette Coleman or lack thereof, you can also go and see uh, the installation of this work. So that will be happening. We're gonna start that pretty early, probably about 10. So come get your coffee and swing on down. Uh, Jared made a frame to go all the way around the work and then we discussed putting a bead of caulking, silicone caulking along the top, top to prevent moisture from getting behind the panels uh, and the wall. 
I'm not so worried about it because the sealant is on both sides. Um, excuse me. And it's pretty serious stuff. So um, same kind of thing with graffiti if it's a subtractive process. So if someone comes and marks on it, there is a solution that we use to take off the top layer and then replace it. So it's, it's beautiful and it's such an amazing addition to, to the community. You forgot that they're going to get shocked electrically if they, anybody touches this one, right? Yeah, and right. Electric shock. Um, my other question, um, have we thought about camera work, camera um, around this area? And the only reason I say that is because of our experience um, at 9th and Alpine and 21st and Hover. I just might be something that the commission wants to consider. Um, and I say that uh, unfortunately because of some, some challenges that we're facing as a country and as a world right now, I just don't want anybody to, to damage it. So since the, I know that Ninth and Alpine, we were able to find the person who did it. I'm just trying to be um, just something to think about. I can talk to the LDDA because they also already have some cameras. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so How high off the ground is it? We have not installed it as of yet, but uh, I think we had discussed that the bottom was going to be about human height. Oh. So really when you're driving or bicycling, because there's also a bicycle rack right there, we don't want a bicycle to hit into it. So it's going to be up, okay. not high up, but up. Great. I I just want to point out one other thing, um, and maybe you want to go back uh, just another slide or so, um, that he he really did make this site specific. Um, Long's Peak is right there in the image, and that was purposeful. I think it's super cool of him. Yeah, it's a lovely piece. I, I went the first weekend, and uh, it looks so different than after it's finished. Both Meeker being the first mountain and then Long's Peak behind it are there. I love it. So cool. And Tony did write an artist statement for us that will accompany the work as well. Great. Awesome. Great. Fantastic. That's wow. You know, considering this whole COVID stuff, um, <laughs> this is pretty darn amazing that, um, that we're getting all of this done. And of course my agenda just went away for a second. There it is. Okay. Um, then I guess we'll move on to number seven, which is the conservation and maintenance. Um, letter A being the Unity Project. I don't want to put you on the spot, Noah, but do you want to talk about Unity Project? You don't have to, I can if you want. Actually, yeah, <clears throat> pardon me. I um, have met with Marco and I believe her name is Susan a few times, just kind of walking around the neighborhood. And um, there's been uh, some significant repairs done to the Unity Project. Um, there was a lot of structural damage to kind of the bottom of it. Like you said, probably getting bumped into by lawnmowers and stuff like that. Um, so that's all been repaired. Some of the tile work has been refinished um, a new coat of paint around the bottom and a little bit up on the side, some caulking on the back, really just general upkeep, making sure that it's going to at the very least survive this winter and then probably um, have another round, according to them, of, um, of further restoration from that point. <clears throat> Angela, do you have anything to add on that? Uh, I did ask about the plaques on the back. Uh, Peter's not here, but uh, he drove by on his bike as well. And those bilingual plaques, the embossment is basically non-existent anymore. Luckily, Susan Daly has extras. So um, I think that that'll be a part of this too as well is in fact removing those plaques. And I, I was even thinking maybe it might it might be time to consider bronze or something that's going to stand up for a little bit longer. But Mario is absolutely going to work with Susan on getting us phase two. Um, I do think that they went slightly over budget and it's just because of course it took them longer to uh, get the work completed. So there was more damage in the amount of time that it took from 
when we got the under contract this time last year. Luckily, we do a 10% contingency on all projects, and I think that that's going to cover it. So that's very good. Um, yeah, so stay tuned, but Mario is going to send the sealant, the plaque. The mower bumper is going to fall to us. That won't be a part of their um, next process, but I did reach out to Timber with Parks and ask him, uh, you know, just a starting point. But really, by the time next spring comes and the mowers are back, we have to have a solution, so, just something, something to protect. So, Do we need a task force on that, Angela? Um, I also was thinking about the plaques issue because that's not, it's, I mean, it's kind of an issue in several of our pieces. I mean, it's something to think about with the plaques. I mean, okay. I'm just, I, I was thinking about, I was imagining the plaque. And if those of you have done your maintenance stuff, um, you'll notice some of our plaques aren't in the best of shape either. So. And we've had a rebranding. Uh, so some of them have been, you know, they're 20, 20 years old, 10 years old. So it, it might be worth absolutely. I, I would love to see us get a larger a new, project. Yeah, I would love to see us getting new plaques and okay. with, their, with a new logo and the rebranding, but that's just me. Um, we don't have to like dig into that endeavor, but it's something to think about because that would take relatively, uh, uh, we could meet via Zoom. I mean, that's something that we could decide. So that's something to think about. Maybe we could put that on the agenda for next month. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Anybody feedback on that? Have you all, I mean, I, I noticed Andrea was shaking her head about some of the plaques are, and Randy too. They're looking a little bit 1994 or five-ish a couple places. Yeah. Okay, great. Oh, this is some cool. of them are missing completely. Yeah. Yeah. Or they're yeah. There are a few that are in sorry shape. The one the places that I went didn't show that. Okay, great. Let's put that on the agenda for next month and maybe if we want a task force or maybe we could just take a look at our plaques and our uh, maintenance reports. I so, can, if you would like me to engage maybe internal graphic design and see if somebody wants to take a stab at it, so you could see something, or we can just bring it up next time. Well, we could do that if you would like to, and um, I don't know if that requires a motion or not. If we outsource it, then maybe. Uh, um, why don't, between now and then, I'll reach out and see if we have the resources for it. And if we do not, then I'll let you know at the next meeting and we'll bring it back. See, this is what happens when you brainstorm and you make people think about, they're like, oh wait, well that plaque needs to be replaced. Well, wait, there are many pieces of the plaques could use a little work, so thank you. All right, so this is, speaking of sad things, let's talk about the Ninth and Alpine project. Luckily, it's not a sad conversation. It's a happy conversation because the folks uh, with Sonar Creative Division are working with the city. And so I made that connection and right, as for now, it's, it's on its way. So that's good. And in the meantime, I got a sketch for the remediation, which I will share with you. Granted, I will say that I don't think when uh, Patrick and Hunter were looking at it, I don't think that they were looking at the palette of the existing work, but they assured me that it will not be pastel and completely clash with what is existing there that this is to be evocative of um, color contrast, uh, of, of design for look and feel. Um, and then they will, when they get there, um, they'll go in and, and match colors and, and work with the palette that exists. So ignore the Easter egg kind of color. Um, and if you would like, I can show you also some photos of, this is, you see that? That's Patrick where the, where the transition spot will be-ish. Uh, so we'll, we'll 
You don't see it? Okay, hold on. Let me try again. Does this new sketch incorporate the animals that are there? Animals will stay. That wasn't a part. Luckily, that was not a part of the damage. So can you see that part? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the inside. Uh, and it doesn't even look like that anymore, really. Um, there's very little figure uh, of, the, of the rolling hill, if you will. Uh, that's pretty much gone now. But this, this line is the inside line of where um, it will start. And then, I don't know why it's making me. This is, can you see that? That's where it, it exits on the outside, which is great because Cindy, to your point, from this line to the right is the elk. And the elk is actually in very good shape. The mallard needs a little bit of touch up, but very little, and they will include that as well. Um, so the goal is to get uh, the primer gentleman hired to get in there as soon as possible. Uh, let our friends in parks know that it's going to happen. I'll hire barricades. Uh, to close down, pull the right of way permit, and then uh, we're going to get to it really at the end of this month, early next month. Um, so we will be putting the, the, the stuff on it, the lack for uh, lack of professionalism there, the, the, thing, the stuff on it right away before the barricades come down that will protect it. Yep. Okay. And I that think was one we'll just, of, we had a lag in that. I think that was one of our errors is that there was a lag, quite a, a, a long lag between the, the mural being put up and then the, the preventative stuff that you put on it. Yeah. And uh, luckily the mural shield, which Noah, shake your head. Yes. I think that we agreed that we're going to try, try this one. We're going to try this one. Uh, because it's what Mike really prefers. He's the graffiti specialist. Uh, and I think I'm gonna ask the, pri the gentleman who does the primer uh, if I can hire him out. So he can just be on site. And as soon as the section that um, Pat and Hunter are working on is done, then we just, we just take care of it right then and there rather than relying on something else. So it's a bit of a domino. Uh, project, but I, I anticipate it being done very quietly and very quickly. Do you need anything from the commission as far as approval? Yep, probably, yep. so it's going to be, uh, it's going to be volunteer shifts for sure. So once we nail down exactly what dates, uh, I would love to have a commissioner on either side during working hours, basically, just fielding questions. Um, and you know, that it t took a long time to get here, but we're fixing it and we're protecting it. And, <laughs> excuse me. And, um, will the, do we anticipate that the weather will cooperate? <laughs> You're in Colorado, Noah. That's part of the reason, excuse me. Part of the reason that the timeline is so up in the air is because it has to be warm. Mm -hmm. right? So if um, it's looking good, then we'll be good. So we'll need volunteers at some point and then we can probably pass around the volunteer list or you'll ask for those. Um, my second question would be, We've already, I mean, everything's good. You've got the funding to take care of everything. We're all ready to roll on it. Yep, we're under contract with him already. So Excellent. It's, um, it's really your approval of this design. Um, if I can get back to it. Can you see that? No, not yet. Oh. That's the thing. Why doesn't it change when I change my screen? It's so weird. Because you have to go to a different screen on your, you have to go uh. to... You have to click on the share screen again and then click on the little blue thing, highlight it again. I've only learned this the hard way. Uh, sorry. 
everything's different. Um, so while you're doing that, I just want to say a lot of hard work went into this, Angela. You get lots of kudos for this. Yeah. It's been a bear. It's, um, you know, and, and I understand, but uh, the fact that we have, that the artist is agreeing to continue this project is a big one. So thank you. But yeah. And it's, the sign's uh, up. I mean, the, the, the picture is up, so we can see it now. Awesome. And you said it would not be the pastel Easter egg colors. Is that what you're, you know, I like it as long as it's, yeah. What does everybody else think? Well, I, I would like to see the artwork of what's up there that we're keeping side to side before we make, uh, before I make a decision. Yeah. Is that possible? Yep. Um, what, why don't, um, can we table this for just a minute and yeah. the next thing while I scramble real quick? It's a block from my house. Do you want me to run down and? No, I got it. I, it's, it's just going to take me a minute. All right. No worries. Thanks. All right. Then we'll table that while Angela looks. Um, and we're going to talk about New Moon um, 5, I believe, uh, by Raven Swanson. Um, and That's me too, but I can talk. As okay, well, we if can. I don't look all weird. Do I look weird while I'm looking? No, you don't look weird, but <laughs> we can like, um, we can like talk about something else while you don't look nope. weird. No, you're fine. So uh, the total for Raven to come out and look at the work, um, prep for the installation, do the restoration of the sculpture, which she said would take about three hours, um, the truck and the equipment for the grinder, the generator, and basically taking those pieces off on site, uh, she totaled uh, just under $500, which is pretty awesome. Uh, she thinks the 100% that it should be something that can happen on site, uh, no reason to deinstall, uh, we were totally wrong on the powder coating piece of it. It really is uh, taking a look at it. She did also say that she thinks that those welds to the, the footer are very secure. So uh, that's really helpful as well. Do we need to have a motion on that at all? Or are we good yes, to go? Yes, we need to approve the funding up to some amount. Um, I mean, I can't imagine that she's going to go over Again, her bid was was just under five hundred dollars. I think we should probably say seven hundred or eight hundred, maybe. Just you know, I just am learning. It's better to to be able to have to go forward because often we've had to come back and increase things. So I mean, does anybody want to make a motion to do up to a certain amount? I'll motion to do over eight hundred to do eight hundred. So up to 800, up for to this 800 project? for this project. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Let's make sure that we don't have any discussion before, because I keep forgetting that part that we have to talk about stuff. It's kind of straightforward, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay, great. So we have Pamela mo moving and then Aaron seconding. Um, all in favor. Oh, I can't do that. All opposed? Okay. My husband's yelling at my dog, so I'm going to mute myself for a second. Great. All right. Wonderful. So that one's easily done. Um, so duly noted that we will, we would like to put in our budget that we would go up to $800 for this. That doesn't mean you can say, hey, they'll give you uh, $300 more or $250 more, but yeah. yeah. Great, 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 great. Okay, um, so while she's still looking, are you are you still looking a little bit, friend? Yeah. Okay, so then we can move on to, um, we need to gather enough people, um, um, site review, and that would be Cindy. So Cindy, you're on. Angela and I went and looked at the sculpture, which was much bigger than I remembered it being, but it's been a while since I've tried to make it move. Um, it's really um, the scale part, the platform with the weights under it, are in a giant cement bunker. And the pole with the mobile on it 
is 10 yards, 15 yards down the bank towards the water. And mm -hmm. the bushes have grown up so much there that we couldn't tell if it was in the water or not. So we discussed a lot of things, some of which was move it, to uninstall it, and then reinstall it when the Army Corps Engineers is over or put it in a different park. And we uh, decided all of that was too difficult and would leave Isaac, if we put it in another park, it would leave Isaac Walton kind of bare of artwork. So once we decided to leave it there and move it, we walked around down the causeway and back and looked at four different sites that were, can you guys still hear me? Cause I've completely frozen up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, we looked at four different sites that were possible. Some of them, one of them looked good, but the background was the cement factory and another one way out at the end of the causeway looked good, but, um, there's the power lines overhead and that might be an issue. So we made a whole list of questions to ask uh, Steve and maybe the artist too. Um, Angela, did you get a chance to do any of that? Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, am I muted? No, I'm not. No. Oh, I'm not muted. I can still talk. Sorry. Um, yes, I did ask Steve. No, I have not heard back. Okay. Um, and once... <laughs> I was going to say I'd share those images with you, but I have other images up. Um, I think that the big thing, Andrea, when we went to visit, you were out of town in Santa Fe and Laura wasn't able to meet us. So I think uh, since you're on that task force, uh, I can send you the image of the location while we wait, the locations while we wait to hear back from Steve. And maybe in some amount of time, you can go out and visit and see if you think that this is even feasible possible as well. Um, it's going to be a very, it, it's going to be a very large undertaking. Um, I, I don't know who is, is and is not familiar with that work, but obviously it has some sort of hydraulic component. Um, the encasing that the, the mechanics are in has a wooden top, like it's going to need to be rebuilt. Uh, so, so getting the right place is going to be absolutely 100% key and, and seeing if it's even possible on the causeway before we go too far down the road of getting the artist involved. So um, I'll nudge Steve yet again. I have a couple of things I need to nudge him about, uh, but maybe that'll keep us still moving. And Cindy, I don't know if you and Andrea can meet separately or take that walk. Andrea, I'd be happy to meet you there whenever it's convenient for you. Sure. And I, we, I can point out the, the sites that we looked at. Sure, just email me after the meeting. Okay, and um, one more question. Angela, do you think that we would have to completely destroy that bunker? I remove it from where it is. But we're going to build a new one. We're going to have to build a new one. But will we be able to leave part of that in place, or are we going to have to completely destroy it? With the very few conversations that Steve and I have had, uh, it's, it, it really is the Army Corps of Engineers that's going to come in. And, and so I don't know what their plan is and what's necessary. Um, but the last that we had spoken about the, the new location was just to be assured that someone could get off from the bike path uh, and riding their bike around with the, their friends and gather enough people because that's the goal. So he may even come back and say, yes, it needs to move, but maybe it just needs to move, you know, 50 yards or 50 feet, or, you know, it, it may not need to be as far of a move. But I, do, I just don't know. I just don't know. So, but keeping it in the same park makes, it makes sense to me because it is going to be quite an undertaking. One of the biggest things we have to find out is whether or not the mobile pole part can actually go in the water. And who would we find that information out from Cindy? I'm guessing either, either Steve or the artist. I think it's the artist. Yeah. Okay, because he's going to know the guts. And uh, my intern, 
the last time we spoke, uh, we were hoping the intern could actually come into the office, but then she's a CU student, so she could not, but now she's back. So that's great. Um, so digging into the physical files of the work, it was very, very early work in the collection. So hopefully there's some, um, a, a better term, the guts, right? The Some sort of, of image of what the guts look like. But whatever, we're going to have to like dig a big trench and put cables and everything. So it is going, and plus building this big cement bunker, it is going to be very expensive. Yeah. And yeah. Well, so, we have a budget for maintenance and that's, that's why. So, so Cindy and Andrea, are you, are we, you going, are we going to have a, like a figure that the commission's going to have to approve? Is that something, Angie, I mean, is that, I don't know, going forward, is that something that we need to, to make a motion to, again? I think that, that, that the cost is not going to, we're not going to know that imminently. Okay. It's going to be several months before we find that out. We'll have to get a structural engineer yeah. and an artist. Okay, perfect. So, no, yeah. thank you for your hard work on that. That's really awesome. Thank you. Okay. I have some in, in, um, images, but they're really renderings but it's the best that I can find without being in the office, so. Hey, and feel free to send those to us. I mean, if we needed to do, well, we want to get a vote on this, so you're right, never mind. I can, I can send some, but this is at least just, this is an idea and is the palette. Can you see that? Yes. I can't see anything. So this is, the, the palette is this very vibrant, not pastel, um, very royal purple. And I think that that's where they're getting with the other sketch is that they're going to be these complementary and then um, delicate shades from one to the next. Um, I personally read the dark mountains on the sketch as, um, as like night kind of coming in. Let me pull that back up for you. Oh, we want side by side. Let me see what I can do with the side by side. Can you still see that other one though? Yes. Okay. Um, how to do side by side. All right, hold on, just give me a second. While Angela's looking, what do y'all think? I like it much better than the other one. I think it's beautiful. I do too. I love the elk and the mountain. I really like it. <clears throat> any other any other feedback? You don't have to like it. You can express how you <laughs> feel. That's what we're all about. I, I think it's pretty cool. And considering those of us, I know there's a couple of us that have been here from the beginning on this and boy that it's it's so nice to see such um productive folk yeah the, the vibrancy is really nice and angela's already volunteered to not only barricade but to put a tent out and we'll all take shifts to sleep by it until we get that protective coating up so who's in on teasing campfire stove hotel <laughs> <laughs> well like i said that it's like three blocks from my house so i mean you could at least take a shower and use the restroom if you needed to Thanks, um, Angela, for digging through all this. I know you didn't plan on having to do this tonight, so thank no, you. It's okay. I'm just having a really hard time with the side-by-side. -side. Okay, so um, it's, what I'm hearing is a whole lot of nothing, which means that I think that at this point, we need more assessment of the, of the sketch. Uh, is that fair to say? mind you um, bringing now that I've seen this picture again if you could bring up the old one I know you can't do it side by side but I, this is at least fresh on my mind 
I'm just curious. I'd like to see the other one again. Sorry, guys. If no, nope, you're okay. Monopolizing here. No, you're fine. Oh, you're great. You are fine. So, okay, here's one more thing that I found really quickly. Before, so the old, so from that rendering, so here's some actual color. Mm -hmm. um, that will give you a little bit of idea of what actually is. So um, very vibrant, vibrant, you know, primaries. I'm, I'm also looking at the, the lines. So like the, you've got a lot of, lot of uh, kind of pyramid lines and, and triangles and I'm wanting to compare the lines as well. I think the colors will be fine. I'm concerned about these lines here, um, whether or not they kind of blend in with the old, because you're basically putting this new into the old, right? And trying to blend the two murals together. This does look a little more flowy. Right, that's my concern. And uh, does that grass motif show up anywhere else in the existing work? Because no. I think that maybe is what's throwing it. It's got yeah. that more of that like bendy fluid thing going and it kind of like, yeah. Let me grab the um, email that the artist wrote so you can hear from their lips the idea. Okay. Are you able to see right now the, um, the grass? Is that working? Yes. Okay. Oops, if I spell Hunter's name right, she would say, okay. He says, uh, thank you for your updates. We have blocked out the last week below the mock-up for both walls. So this piece, again, not one straight wall, but half of it on one side, half of it on the other. Uh, we might tweak a few things, switch some colors out here and there. Uh, think it will bring space, nice energy. Nothing about flowy. Yeah, so the flowy clouds are definitely new, as well as the grass. I do think that there were some more bubbly clouds in the original, uh, but I'm not finding any image of those because they're inside. They're inside the underpass, if you will. Well, it does have the straight blue lines on the end, which will blend into the existing work. And I just think this would be great inside. And also, no, I think it would be great. I like it. Same, I'm, uh, I'm not a fan of these placeholder colors, but if it is a more vibrant kind of technicolor experience, I would enjoy that a lot. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Andrea, I totally understand your concern, um, but I, I, I just want to say that I also trust Patrick. Like he's going to make this a, a, a comprehensive um, composition. Um, he's he's certainly not going to mess up his own work of art, and so I'm I'm glad that you're pressing the issue but I, I i really do trust patrick to make sure that it, it I, looks I good i totally agree kim and i think that we worked with patrick so much in the previous lifetime of this that um he's if he's back he's dedicated well and he had an opportunity he had an easy opportunity to get out of this project if he didn't want to go forward with it um i'm with noah too i, I the vibrancy is really important I do have one more question. Is this just going to be like the first 15 feet into the north part of the tunnel on each side, or is it going to go all the way through? Nope, just the north part. It will uh, then blend with the rest of the mural. And um, yeah. I guess, it would, I guess it would sort of look like going from mountains to prairies. I think so, a little bit too. Um, I had another thought and I forgot, but yes, so that, that north, that north side of it. And also the mallard, uh, and the elk are on that north side coming in. So, um, the other thing, and I'm going to 
you know, be real honest with you about how this goes is just because the sketch is coming to you and we approve this work to move forward. If it is finished and not sufficient, you do not have to accept it and we can continue to work on it. So um, there is that piece as well. If you would also like another sketch that is more evocative of um, what those transition points are going to look like, we absolutely can go back and ask for that. I can say, yes, I, I, I do want this to finish because I personally want it to finish, but also to be done right. I trust Patrick, but if the commission's feeling is that you need to see more before moving forward and need, we need to push the finish of this to, um, to the spring, that's fine. We could also go ahead and, and prime the section that will be um, eventually painted. Um, we could do that too. So there's Discussion? options here. Uh, um I would maybe ask that he, at the very least, get the matching colors before we make a decision. Angela, I, I mean, I know you've worked so hard on this and then like Kim pointed out, um, we have very limited time as far as weather goes. I mean, this is something that we, what is our timeline on this? If we wanna get it going, um, we don't have, you know, it, it could be today is 58, tomorrow is 65, Saturday is 74. I mean, what do we need to do as far as weather goes? Because he has limited time to get this done. Are we going to wait um, until spring? I would hope not. Me too. I, I'm, I would, you know, it would be nice if we could see the actual color palette that he was going to use mm -hmm. for this part. Um, I don't know how fast he could get that to us, but we could certainly see it before our next meeting and then, you know, just give input to Angela on it. How does the commission feel about doing something electronically? If, yeah. if, he, can, if he can get that to us sooner than later? I'm Asking artists to do things rapidly is not a really fair thing to do, but maybe if, if Angela simply requested, hey, could you give us a little more uh, detail on the color for this mm -hmm. um, and then we had that in hand what do y'all think of that that would be fine with me uh, and if he if we just got sent a sample of it that would be fine and then we could all let Angela know how we feel about it well and technically would we would probably need to have a vote but my feeling yeah. is also that uh, I'm with Kim and those of us I think several of us were on this project He's very reliable and anybody who's willing to come back into their own work. Um, if you talk about ethos, he's got goodwill and he's got background. He's really proven to us that he's, he's dedicated to this project. So. Mm -hmm. I, I completely understand that he needs to get there and, and color match the colors that are there already. I mean, it's not like he just has those laying around. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, I understand that he has to, he has to color match it. I'm, I wonder a little bit, if this will be a shocking transition from the rest of the tunnel to this part to outside and maybe, well, I'd have to, yeah, I'd have to see it. Maybe like a few more grass leaves on the old one on the old part. I don't know. Yeah. If he's going to go ahead and try to get the colors closer to where they were, maybe we could ask him also to put the elk and kind of attach it all together. I mean, he can do that. It's a, just a, something electronically that he can do so that we could see the whole thing and then we get an idea if it's going to be too much of a contrast from the old to the new. And if, it, if time's an issue that which is understandable because of the weather, you know, maybe we can vote on this um, via email. As soon as he gets it together, we can vote right away. <laughs> You also do have a mural task force, and if the commission would like to yield its uh, formal opinion and give the task force the authority to approve, you can do that as well. Okay. That may be faster and more efficient. I, I would think so. I, I do know that, yeah, 
I think that's a good idea, but you all would have to agree because uh, the mural task force is like mural. This has been such a, not trying, but like, as, as Kim said, this project has like taken a lot of heart and soul from many people, particularly <laughs> Angela. So I don't want anybody to feel like we're skipping over them to get this project done, you know? No, I, I think that how many people are on the task force? Four. Four? See, I, I would trust four, four people to make that decision. And you're always welcome to join the task force. If, no, I could, um, sure, I would do if that. If this is something that, this is, if you're really vested in this and something you really care about, feel free to join that. And maybe um, Angela and I can work to see if we could. How rapid are you thinking, Angela? I know this is kind of a stepping stone for you. What, it, what would you like our timeline to be? Um, I would go back to Hunter tomorrow and ask how fastly, how, how fastly. It's a good word. I like it. Quickly, um, a rendering could be turned around. I can say um, that I know that uh, Patrick will be off his feet very soon because the weather is changing. And I think he has some personal deferred maintenance that he's taking care of. So um, um, I think that if we have to deviate from the timeline of the end of this month, to something else, like we will, uh, it won't happen until spring. And right. that's okay. And that's okay. Um, so without, without knowing how fast they can turn a rendering around. Um, but I would say if we, if we can't get it something done by Monday, we're probably pushing it. Okay. So then my question to the commission is, um, does anybody support us just moving forward and that's trusting Patrick? That's what I was about to say. I'm not sure who said it first, but I, I agree that I would trust the artist, Patrick, to to do his best work um, kind of on his own volition. I don't really feel like, like this is a good enough mock-up that we can kind of picture what it's going to look like in our heads. And I think in the, uh, in the interest of, of time and just getting it done, I think we should just give him the freedom to do what it is and, uh, you know, stand by to, to help with the work. And those of us who are on the commission, we worked, we really worked hard to get this started and going and looking at mock-ups and commissions. And I mean, I think we really worked hard and we trusted him. So I, I, I personally, and I think couple of you may feel this way I feel comfortable with trusting the artist because we often trust the artists and then we judge their work after it's completed so I think that we're vested in this I I'm happy to say that but we would need a motion for that um, to say Amy should we make a motion on it and just see if I don't know how you want to word it but just say those in favor of letting the artists take care of it and moving on um, for the sake of time weather and the project is rolled on <clears throat> along and we're so close. It's like, ah, don't, don't leave it till spring. Um, is that something we should do or not? I don't Ms. know. Miss Angela? So if in the motion we are just assured that we are accepting um, the sketch as presented with um, the elements for cohesive element, um, in, like to include cohesive elements and then also consideration of color so that you preface it because again it, when the final comes back to you you need to approve it for final payment and so as long as the motion reflects that you are not approving this exact sketch so then I can use the motion give it to the artist uh, so then he has a foundation to work from of your expectations that would be perfect and I think that, you know, we really, we approved his work and everything we did. We really based it on not a lot of, um, if y'all remember back then, it wasn't a lot of preface. We didn't have a lot to go on. Um, and we trusted him. And I think saying now, well, guess what, Patrick, we don't trust you, um, is also kind of undermining his hard work. And the mere fact that he agreed to come back and fix this, um, to me, is showing that um, he's dedicated to this work. So we would need a motion. I can't make that motion. Um, 
don't feel like you're obligated to vote on a motion if you don't agree with it, um, that's fine. But um, we would need a motion from someone to say, uh, yes, or I motion that we will go forward with the artist making his final decision or um, how would we phrase this a better? Um... What about something like um, um, we're, we're making motion on accepting the artist sketch um, that would in actuality have um, cohesive fluid blending colors the end. <laughs> <laughs> what we're saying is we trust Patrick, right? Yeah, right. But I think what Angela was saying is that she wants it to include the motion, so when she, uh, to include that the colors, the fluidity, the um, blendingness of the murals um, are acceptable to everyone at the end product. And yes. so in the motion, I'm assuming that's what you want said. Angela? Yeah. You need it to the artist. That's all I'm saying. And I also know that Patrick, he, I mean, he, he dealt with a lot of community members and kids and people. And um, he was very open while we were creating this. Those of you who came down to Ninth and Alpine, I think Randy was there. Right? Weren't you there, Randy? Yeah. Uh, no. You could just say you were. It was back in the uh, old days. That was the other Randy. No, and it was, I mean, we all sat out. It was really hot, and we sat under a tree, and then we went and painted, and then we'd come back and sit under the, he was really so sweet, and he worked with members of the community, and the one thing he said is, you know, this, I don't know if we're fairly representing the demographic here, but people really came and wanted to do it, so. So, Susan, oh. I have this on recording with what you just said. Can I just capture that? And you say that's that motion? So, you want me to make a motion? Yes, please. Oh, okay. So, um, I'd like to make a motion to accept um, the artist's sketch um, that it would, in the end, be um, cohesive and fluid with blending colors to the rest of the existing mural. Um, and period. <laughs> I second. Um, and that's fair enough. All opposed. I can't see everybody. So I'm looking down. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Okay. Let's say it again. All in all opposed. All abstain. Okay. Thank you everyone it looks like the motion passes um and taking into consideration those of you who are questioning this we still have a final approval to look at um so i i understand your hesitation in this um but i think that um we're not we're trying to really we hired this artist and i think that you know when we hire an artist we're trusting them to do things that we wouldn't necessarily, you know, we look at this little box. Like think about even just our simple little shock boxes. We, we, well, we have a little box and we trust them to do it the way that we think that they're going to do it. And I, and also this has been a very um, backwards way of going about a, a project. So even, even with all of the challenges, then there just have been additional. So um, I, I wouldn't say that this is a cookie cutter mural project by any, by any sense so uh, but thank you so um i i will do my best to get uh needless to say i will still do my best to get some renderings and things to you to see in advance even with this motion on the table or um with this language so, so and i might ask angela if not only showing us the renderings but if you have concerns and you don't feel really comfortable about what what happened there's i know you know i'm up in the air too please let Angela know. And I'm sure she's willing to talk to the artist and say, you know, we approve the motion. We're really hoping that you will consider this, or we're really hoping you will consider that. Yeah? Anybody ever, I mean, we, of course the motion's approved, but I mean, I'm sure Angela and I knowing, knowing Patrick, he's willing to consider our, our concerns. 
I'll just, I'll just add, I think, too, that, I, again, I really do understand people's um, reservations, but of all the people involved in this process, he is the one who is most vested in that thing looking fantastic. So he's got a lot of his own personal um, reputation and everything else invested in this project. And so he's going to make it look as good as it possibly can. Thanks, Kim. I totally agree with you. And you've been with this on square one. So yes. Okay. Awesome. I know that's, it, 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 this is one of those that, I don't know, like I said, this is my neighborhood. So it kind of tears my heartstrings too. And I know a few other commissioners were like the same way with things that happen in their neighborhoods, but it's pretty important. Okay. So we've already Cindy's done her thing. So we are now on to number eight, which is our administrator's report by the one and only Angela. So just a couple of quick things. Um, we do have three vacancies and the application is open. So I am going to be sending it to you, um, especially some of you who are going off this year or in the, in the near future. I know, I'm sorry, Amy. Um, if you wouldn't mind sending it around, we actually have one shock artist shock art artist who is interested which that's really exciting i would love to see uh maybe youth represented as well and just thinking about diversifying our our commission uh, some of the volunteers who came to the tony ortega mural were interested and so i'll be sending this application to them so again the more outreach that we can do that's how we fill these vacancies so um, I'll be sending that along. Can I note also that I yeah. want you all to start thinking about uh, future leadership, um, chair, vice chair, uh, Randy, some of you that I, I've, I've sh shared with many of you, I'm done. I can't be on here anymore after next year, which seems like a long time away, but it's only really like eight months. So um, if you are interested in being chair, um, think about it. It's, it's so much fun to be with this group and um, it's, it's good stuff. So I think I've talked with a couple of you, but don't hesitate to do it because I know that there are a bunch of leaders in this amazing group. So we would need a chair. We need a vice chair. We, um, unless Randy wants to step forward because often that look at Randy, she's like, shush, shush, Amy. But think about that too. While you're thinking about sending this application out, think about where you belong on this commission. Um, think about what you would like to see this commission do. I think that you all see it. And I, what I've been fascinated is that we actually have a pretty common vision mm -hmm. for things, which has been really exciting. And I think um, we owe Angela a huge thank you because she's got it together. Even if she can't find her images sometimes, she's totally got it together and so I'm organized. Home. I'm at home. <laughs> okay, keep going, Angela. I just wanted to plug that in and now I'll mute myself. That's awesome. So that's the big thing. The second thing is we do have a relocation of a work that we need to take care of. You, within your collection, our collection, the city's collection, have a beautiful piece by an artist. Hopefully you can see that. Oh, uh, yeah. Can you see that? Yes or no? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, it is called Blue Mile by Armando Oliver, Al, Alvarez, Alvarez, Alvarez. Um, it's 46 by 60, which is pretty big. Mm -hmm. It used to be in the museum above the water fountain, and that space has tended to uh, lend itself to exhibition uh, pieces. So I was hoping that as, and forgive the, the background, that's the racking, if you will, the, in the museum where it's being stored right now. So the piece is the blue piece, not the corn mm -hmm. cup on the side. Um, hoping that folks who will be looking at space for the new work that you just purchased from the firehouse will also be considering a new home for this. Uh, so is this is a textile or a painting? It is a, it's oil. Okay, it's just, okay. It does have quite a bit of texture, that's true. Yeah, it really does. It almost looks like a textile. But What's yeah, the measurements? What's the measurements? It's 46 by 60. 
So it's quite large. So as we go through our, our daily lives or you go to pay your electric bill or um, if the task force who's looking for a new home for the other work would like to consider this or we could have a subcommittee just specifically for this painting. Uh, there's no rush, it, but it's just in storage and is not on display, which is tragic in my book. So um, yeah, does anyone have a strong feeling about Finding this place a home, or oh should, yeah, I or should we just really stick like with the, the two-dimensional folks who will be doing some research? Susan Horowitz, <clears throat> me, Noah. Yeah, the, it's That's a very good. nice piece. I can see. It. I do it's very good. much like it, but I don't know uh, where. I can't think of a place off the top of my head where it should go. Yeah. Yeah, but that's why we have to look. We'll just try and figure something out because it should be seen. Okay, so I think rather than opening up a new subcommittee for one painting, maybe we just start with the uh, kind of the investigation of city walls and spaces. Mm -hmm. what, and what's the name of this piece? Blue Mile. Okay, all right. Well, that is, that's going to be a, that'll be a, a big one and very exciting as well. Is that kind of representative of the um, Longmont mile that they, you know, when they first um, made the city, the blue, they, it was just a mile in size. Is that what it's kind of representing? Do you know? Eileen, can you speak to any of the information from the collection file on this one? It is my understanding that it is kind of a representation of the mile by mile plot that Longmont it was uh, right. originally right. was. Um, it he is the same artist that did the arches on Main Street, and so I think um, he did have a lot of exposure to that map. Uh, and so yeah, I see the same thing that it's right. Our, you know our the Longmont. Right, the plaque um, right by St. Stephen's Plaza on the, in the ground is right. the Longmont um, Mile, the first blueprint of the historical uh, plat of Longmont in, I think, 1871. So I think that's what I see as well. That's probably the connection between Longmont and that piece. And just for reference, um, this piece was hanging in the Civic Center before the Civic Center remodel began and then was moved to the Museum for Safekeeping and put above the water fountains. Um, and we just, you know, now it's in storage at the museum and uh, it, yeah, it would be nice to get it back out. Any other feedback on that? That's something that we might want to work on. Uh, yeah, it should definitely be seen. Um, I don't know if the committee that's already doing the Ninth Street, <clears throat> my voice is going, I'm sorry. That committee that's doing Ninth and Alpine should look at it too. That, well, I don't know if that's necessarily a cross um, because this is more of an indoor, that's correct? True. Yeah, it is definitely indoor. So two-dimensional indoor, um, I think that's something that... The firehouse people should do? Well, well, no, not necessarily. Well, no, I don't mean to say no, but this is something that mm -hmm. um, while we're looking for our firehouse project, mm -hmm. the, um, the project that we're purchasing from the firehouse, what do we call this? Actually, I need a title. Angela? You no, know, I do. I do too. And uh, I don't think that it maybe has a proper title because it was an altarpiece. We could call it the altarpiece for now. The nine, um, you know, 1980 disaster in Longmont was like our first, it was our first yeah. big cultural boom in Longmont. Um, so we could call it the altarpiece. So, so those of you who are looking, we are looking, a couple of us are looking mm -hmm. for places for that. That would be the place to come, come look, maybe look for this. Maybe that's a location subcommittee or task force rather than 
maybe it's something that's permanent that we need to have a, a task force or subcommittee that looks at locations um, when we have things come up in the middle of the year. Susan? Well, only since um, I'm on that task force for what we're calling it now, the alter group. <laughs> I think we easily can keep in mind that we have this beautiful piece called Blue Nile and so it can certainly be in the forefront of both things that we're looking at. And, and it should be a big deal uh, um, unless we just can't find a spot. Andrea, yeah. I saw your, your mic went off. Did you have feedback oh, on that? Oh, I was only going to say, I know Angela kind of recommended above the water fountain in the museum. So just keep that in mind when you make a decision to keep that in mind as one of the possibilities. Um, and this is kind of a strange, Marsha might be able to answer this question. As far as the remodel in the Civic Center space goes, um, do you think that that might be an opportunity for us to go look around and see what spaces are available for us to place art? just in a general fashion? Um, I think the answer is yes. And then uh, uh, the Civic Center, um, I don't think that in terms of interior design, there's been much of a remodel. You know, it looks like it always has. Um, and uh, it's just structurally sound now. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> but it, the building is open, you know, the okay. mall part portion is open, so there's certainly nothing preventing anyone from going and looking around. Well, that's something that our task force can do, Susan, and everyone. Who else? Uh, Susan? Who's on that task force? Noah, Susan, and Amy. And and I'll Andrea, I think, I know. I'll be on it, too. I want to be on it. And Randy. Okay. okay. And Andrea, I'll you're muted, friend. I'm just curious if Marsha Martin has any ideas. That's what I just asked her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry yeah. about that. No, she so, said that if everything's open, that we could go look. Right, Marsha? Right. Yes, but the um, uh, a lot of the art that was displayed there now is down. You know, so like there was a quilt from uh, the Northern Arapaho, and that's down, and and um, there was a painting from Art in Public Places in the stairwell, a kind of a three-dimensional uh, cityscape. And that's down uh, because it would have been damaged by all the dust and so on. Um, Marsha, do you know who's responsible for putting that back up? So we might be I, able to, oh, Ms. <laughs> Angela Brill. I guess you have to be on that task force too, sister. Well, I think uh, maybe I can connect you with uh, Michelle Gomez with the city clerk's office, and she would be a good person knowing the timeline of the Civic Center, uh, because I don't know the status of the quilt, and Eileen, I'm looking at you, but I don't think that's at the museum. So that makes me think that there are other objects that might uh, have have placeholders. So we'll want to be sure that an, a, a space that you're identifying for new work is indeed available. So we'll connect uh, the task force with city colleagues um, prior to a site visit. Excellent. Okay, good. All right. So task force will get together and we'll start picking on people without having to uh, bother our commission people. So uh, Susan, would you like to chair that task force? This is to find locations for the altar and for the Blue Nile. Is that yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you for being voluntold. That's awesome. Um, anybody else? Um, do you have anything else in your administrator report? Oh, that's it. Okay. So, wow. We are into number nine, new business, right. and we still have 16 minutes. I'm going to be really quick, but uh, I have some just absolutely fascinating and exciting news. Uh, I connected with Wayne Tomac, which uh, his role exactly uh, splits itself between community services and sustainability. And uh, he is the neighborhood representative. I don't know his exact title, but he is a um, all about... Uh, working with our neighborhoods that are connected through the 
Neighborhood Group Leaders Association, which is called NGLA. Is anyone in this room a part of or know that your neighborhood may or may not be involved in NGLA? That is really interesting to me. We have 55 neighborhoods in uh, Longmont who are all a part of this very inclusive group where a neighborhood comes together, uh, joins this group, and rather uh, than being an HOA, which is very exclusive, this is a very inclusive group. And by participating, uh, they attend meet monthly meetings. They have one to three representatives from, from their neighborhood. And uh, it really is about empowering neighborhoods to understand their kind of micro community within the larger community. And the options available to them is to be able to do neighborhood improvement projects. The NIP projects uh, have been going on for some 20 years. And believe it or not, uh, there have been one or two times when an art in public places and a neighborhood improvement project uh, could have come about and, and have a marriage, uh, but they never really worked out. So uh, without getting too into the weeds about the way that their grant project um, works, um, we have two uh, grant opportunities that are going to be coming to us. That is to say that two different neighborhoods have applied for a neighborhood improvement project that would include art and public places. So I am on a, a little bit of a learning curve here. I absolutely will 100% uh, ask for a task force as soon as I understand a little bit more. But uh, just a quick brief of the timeline. Uh, folks put their grant applications together uh, in the summertime. They are submitted by a time in September. Then Wayne goes through them and kind of combs out the details of what these neighborhood uh, leaders need to do to refine and present a final refined document in January. They're awarded in March and then their neighborhood improvement project needs to be completed by the end of that fiscal year. So we have again two that are going to be coming to us um, to see how art and public places can assist with uh, with these um, yeah, projects. So just wanted to get it on the agenda. Again, I don't have a ton of details right now, um, but think about uh, if you would, if you're interested in seeing how uh, project management kind of comes about from start to finish and, and sit in with me on that, especially through this very established, think about that task force as something that you, that you might want to, to join. So, yep, stay tuned for more of that. And that is all I have. For real? <laughs> I hope no. I have work left tomorrow. No, That's you all. did. No, you did really, 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 really well. Okay. You're so okay. impressive, Ms. Angela. I lied. I have one more thing. Um, executive committee was supposed to meet on the 8th, but we ha um, had some uh, difficulty in getting all together in the same place. So now it's the 22nd. So you'll also hear executive committee business next month. And that is all. And I take some credit for that. I had to be in a Zoom and then we wanted to meet. Yeah. So thank you, Angela, for coordinating all that. Okay. So we are on to the number 10, no, number nine. Any new business that we need to take up from the commissioners? I think Angela brought up quite a bit of new business. Any other new business? I think, yes, Randy. Not really new business, but it's more of commissioner comments. Are we... We, well, we're, we got that number 10. Let's go new business and then we'll go to number 10. I'm, I'm teasing. I don't know. Anybody have any new business they want to bring up? I know Noah and I are looking at presenting something next month. Um, any other new business that we want to bring up? I do want to like put this in your mind and this is, you know, who I am. So usually in December, we don't have a formal meeting. We have a... Um, a, a professional gathering that includes white elephant gifts. And um, so next month, or actually we're supposed to vote it on it this month, but we will need to vote if you want to have that gathering. I know with COVID, um, things are different. And um, 
we can have our normal December meeting. I'm just going to put it in your head. Um, we usually have a, um, a holiday party where we have white elephant gifts, but it's a whole new gamut. So I don't want any, I want you to spin it around in your head. If you're interested in having a socially distanced safe uh, holiday party in lieu of our meeting, that's cool. If you don't want to, we can have our regular meeting. We could maybe do a Zoom slash happy uh, elephant meeting. We could show our favorite elephant gifts over the years. Just put that in your mind and then we'll talk about it next month. I know it's not that important of an agenda item, but it's something that I've looked forward to for the last five years that I've been on the commission. Um, Andrea was so gracious and she hosted it last year. Um, so I don't know what our, our change will be. Um, things change quite rapidly and it, it's usually well attended. We usually have invited all of our alumni is that the right word? Former commissioners. Um, and that's something to think about. So that's my new business, but we won't bring it up. Let it spit in your head for a little bit. Any other commissioner comments? Um, Randy, you had one or? I think I will save it for the executive committee just to bounce it off you guys first. Okay, excellent. Anybody else have any comments? Yes, Ms. Angela. <laughs> I also did ask about the, I realize it's not on the agenda, the Boulder, Boulder Housing Authority update, and I don't have one, but. We wouldn't not, have, we, you could have faked that one. But I know, but you. I just want to let you know that it, it was on my radar, I asked, and um, hopefully something next month. Great. Okay. Any other, um, I guess we've kind of combined new business with commissioner comments. Yes, Randy. I'm wondering why Cindy has so much daylight coming through her window when we're all into it. It's a fake thing. I know. Uh, I know. I saw your hair move and it disappeared for a little bit. I'm coming to you from Hawaii. <laughs> if you have a green screen available on your computer, you too could be sitting in Cindy's library. I was at the beach in my last Zoom. Um, I made my husband look, I look very, very pale, and I am very, very pale. I'm looking at all of you, and I'm like, wow, they're not nearly as pale as I am. And I haven't, like, done a little thing. So my lighting in my home is quite odd. Um, I can come to you for mission control next time. <laughs> you know, I always evaporate in those um backgrounds. Uh, Marsha, I haven't really given you a chance. Would you like to up update us on anything that you think that city council's working on or anything that we might want to know? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, I'd like everyone to, to know that uh, 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 Ballot question 3D for the city of Longmont and 3C are, are on the ballot. And um, 3C is, you know, is the water infrastructure. And I think probably everyone will vote for that. And it doesn't have any special bearing on art in public places. But um, 3D probably does because um, it, it, allows Longmont to use longer terms for leasing public buildings and public land um, for any purpose that matters to the city. Um, and one of the one purpose that matters to the city is um, uh, creative amenities. Uh, so, oh, for example, you know, uh, if uh, the Firehouse Art Center wanted to remodel itself, with the little short leases that it has, it couldn't, can't do that because it couldn't loan to do it. If it wanted to make the upstairs usable for classrooms and galleries and stuff instead of being a maze of twitty, twisty little passages, which is what it is now, um, uh, then the city could put together a longer lease. And so everybody should know that that is something that uh, could benefit the arts programs in the city of Longmont and tell your friends because a lot of people don't understand it, but yeah. it really could be essential to 
the economic recovery that Longmont has to engineer in the next couple of years after all things have been damaged by the pandemic. You're on mute and you're talking. Am I on mute? <laughs> no, I am, and that's probably good. I'm like, no. oh, I put my ballot in the box today. So, <laughs> so I uh, got you, Andrea. I wanted to, I wanted to, to say that that you know that people don't understand what yeah. that was for, and um, the city's not allowed to. Publi uh, yeah, publicize it, you know. Um, but I am, so I thought I'd say that. Thank you. I didn't understand it really. So, Miss yeah. Andrea, I just wanted to add that there are some beautiful Day of the Dead exhibitions going on throughout town at the museum, at the library, throughout the window uh, windows of uh, of businesses in Main Street. Um, certainly, the old firehouse. I have a Katrina at the old firehouse, so go look for it. It's a uh, um, the Musicians of Bremen, and um, just go out and explore. It's safe. There's, it's not busy, and go for it. That's awesome. Any other, I mean, we've got four minutes. <laughs> you can change the world in four minutes. I think Noah's asleep. Um, no. <laughs> I thought Cindy was asleep a little while ago. I think she was meditating on what we were talking about. I keep nodding off. I didn't sleep at all last night. Okay. We can well, only see Pamela. Um, I have no comments, but I do want to. Yes, Randy. No, I was saying we could finally see Pamela. Okay, good. <laughs> Who's on mute and talking? But that's okay. Somebody's really cute, <laughs> is all I heard. Oh, she's on mute. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Awesome. Um, please, thank you so much. This is really good work tonight. I think so. What do you think, Angela? Yes, I'm very excited to get with executive committee and start really uh, hammering out a strategic plan so we can put, take a lot of these ideas, start using the charter, start using some forms, uh, really, you know, that will really help me and I'm very much looking forward to that. So I'm, I'm sorry that we had to delay it. And I'm fine with you stretching that paperwork stuff out until May, <laughs> end of May. No. Good organizing things. So thank you. No, thank this you has been great. Um, I just want to thank you all for your dedication. I know that the COVID is really, really a hard thing to do sitting in a Zoom. I've been in meetings since 730 this morning and I know my eyes are starting to hurt and I'm tired. Um, Looking at my friends in squares, it's not nearly as fun as like passing little notes to each other in around the table in the Kaiser room. So I wanted to thank you all for your dedication. It's great to see some of your faces, Francis. Um, haven't got to see you for a while and I know it's just wonderful to have you here. Um, so um, with that being said, at 7.58, we need to have a mo movement to adjourn. Don't drag it out to 7.59. I motion to adjourn AIPP on Thursday, October 15th at 7.58 p.m. Noah, you can second if you want. I uh, second. All right. All in favor? Okay. All right. We will see you next month. And um, executive committee, let's, we'll see you on the 22nd. Okay. Thank you, everyone. You're the best. <laughs> Yay. Lovely to see you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Kim. Kate. Thank you, Pamela. You're welcome, guys. Have a great evening. Great to have you here. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Marsha. Bye.